popular. Picture us. Open our eyes to get the best. Thank you, Father. And as men that will listen to this teaching anywhere in the world, through DVD, video, audio, whatever, in internet, I pray, Lord, they will be blessed. And every one of us that will hear this teaching, you change the story of our life forever. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless you then. Every Christmas, every year, we celebrate the first coming of Christ, which is 25th December, his birth. He left. How many of us talk about, do talk about his second coming? If we talk about his first coming, very often or every year, we should also talk about his, what? His second coming. And that's why I'm preaching on the topic, the second coming of Christ. In Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, I read from verse 3. I'm sure you have your Bible to follow us in our reading. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olive, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? You could see from here, the disciples were asking, What should be the sign? You've already come. You were giving birth to. Today we celebrate Christmas as the time of his first coming. Now, but they were asking me, when shall your second coming be? You talked about you coming back again. You go, you come back. Tell me you go. Are you going to come back like a baby? Or you are going to migrate from somewhere else? Or you come from the sky? Or what are the th things, evidence for us to know that your second coming is imminent? In verse 12 of that mighty 24, the Bible says something about the signs of his coming. So, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was cold. Now, why do I jump all that sign of his coming? Because those ones are the ones you know very well. The Bible says, nation shall be against nations. There will be famine. There will be pestilence. There will be false prophets and false Christ. These are the signs of his coming. You see, even with that sign, the end is not come. That's what Jesus said. He said, even with those signs. He said, but it's going to come. He said, towards the end, he said, there will be more multiplication of sin, and even the love of many shall was cold. Today, you could see those who brought the gospel to us, if you go back to their country, they are selling their church to museum and other religion. Those who brought the gospel to us, where there was great revival, the whole nation will repent. We give their life to Christ. In some nations, some places, in those days, there is no hotel, no hotel, no alcohol center, no beer center, because everyone become Christian. Churches were planted in places where they used hotel before. If you go to such those places now. They are selling those churches to museum and other religion. Those who brought the gospel to Africa, to the nations of the world, now no more have the gospel any longer. We have to take the gospel back to them. Why? Because the love of many has was in cold. And iniquity 
has abounded. In verse 12, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be what? Saved. Only those who will endure. Iniquity is in multiplying. Immorality is on the increase. Adultery is on the increase. Fornication is on the increase. Drug addict is on the increase. Fighting, killing is on the increase. People whose heart is being discouraged because of lack of money, lack of what to eat, is increasing corruption, increasing trouble in the land. People selling their neighbor and their friends because of mammal, which is money. That is the increase of iniquity. And because of that, love people, love for God is washing cold. The Bible says, only those who endure to the end, despite the obstacle, despite the temptation, those who fell and never woke up again, those who committed sin, backslided, and refused to come back again, they will miss the opportunity. But those who, who stood firm, those who remain in the Lord, those despite the trials of life, the backslider that came up again, those who fell into sin and came back and said, no, I want to keep standing. Those who went into that religion and said, no, I'm coming back to Jesus again. Those who forsook the Bible, throw their Bible away and decide, oh no, I'm coming back to Christ again. Those who stay to the end. It is not the beginning. It is the end that matters. The Bible says, those who, who endure to the end, they shall be what? Saved. In verse 14, the Bible says, verse 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. There are nations today. There are countries today. There are individual people today in this world. If you ask, if you talk to them and say, do you know Jesus? They will ask you, is Jesus a black man or a white man? Because they've not heard about Jesus up to today. They don't know about Jesus. Some people have never heard about the Bible. They've never seen the Bible at all with their hands, with their eyes. Now, what am I bringing out? I want you to understand that this gospel will be preached to the end. He said, after the gospel has preached to, and as a witness, he said, then the end shall come. Verse 27, verse 27 says, For as the lightning coming out of the east and shining even unto the west, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. That is verse 27. Now hear me, people of God. Don't be deceived. If they tell you there's Jesus is somewhere in Ekatek Bene, don't be this, don't be believe. If they tell you there's Jesus in Oyingbo somewhere there, don't believe. If they tell you that, oh, there's one O O O O O seven O or three O or twenty one O, and that is Jesus, don't believe it. If they tell you someone in India is Jesus, don't believe it. A man came up in the U.S. right now. He's, he's gathering thousands of people. I mean, I mean, literally gathering thousands of people in America. He said he's even greater than Jesus. He says so. He said Jesus said. He said he is coming back. He said he is the Jesus that has come back. He said he has come back. And now he came back with a greater power than the Jesus that was existing in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. And he said he came back and his number of oppression at Jesus, that was what he said, is 666. Six, six. So he printed 666 six, six on his member's body. And yet thousands of people are following him. And they are hailing him, Jesus. Jesus. Listen to me. Wherever you are, don't be deceived. Nobody should appear to you in a dream in the streets and say it's Jesus. The Bible says, For as the lightning coming out from the east and shining out to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. 
verse 29 of that Matthew chapter 24. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall give her light and the star shall fall from where? From heaven. And the power of the heaven shall be shaken. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribe of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud of heaven with power and what? Great glory. So, don't look for Jesus anywhere. He's going to come right from the sky. He will come with great power. He's not going to come like a baby when he came in the first time. He's going to come from the sky. And all eyes shall see him with great power, with a trump of God. Verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. 36 says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angel of heaven, but my father only. But, verse 37, but as the day of Noah where, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the day that they were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, on the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took away all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other one left. Verse 41, two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Verse 42, wash therefore, for you know not what your, uh, your Lord comment. Verse 44 says, Therefore, be also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man comment. I decided to read a lot of verses. And I'm going to read more verses for you to know that this thing we're teaching is the Word of God. Jesus said it's going to come. He's coming again. A lot of people have forgotten the fact that he's going to come. We don't need to talk about it again. But the truth is going to come. If we talked about his first coming, his first coming was prophesied by Isaiah. His first coming was prophesied by, Mo by Moses. His first coming was prophesied by all the prophets in the Bible. And they were waiting for his first coming. Even a woman was fasting, Anna was fasting, waiting for the coming of the Savior until he saw this child, Jesus Christ. Born of a virgin Mary. You may ask me, why did he have to come as a child? Why did he not fly from heaven? He has to come as a child like a natural bed. Grow up naturally because his first coming was to pay for our sin. His second coming is to reward the saint. Take them for reward. He came in the force to pay his price, to make a sacrifice. And he has to pass through all we pass through so that his sacrifice could be justified. And that's why he came naturally. And he paid the price through the death on the cross. Now the Bible says He's going to come again. He's going to come. When is he going to come? He said, even the angels in heaven don't know except my his father. The Bible says he will come like a day, the day you don't even think about. He gave an example of Noah. He said, Noah keep preaching that the God will destroy this world with water. They laugh at him. They say, when did you see what had destroyed the whole world? They mocked at him. He preached repentance on them. 
but they refused. Talk to them about salvation. They had in their mind. They want the pleasure of life. They want the satisfaction of life. Until the very day they enter into the act. And God shut the door. God himself shut it. If God had not shut it, men would have opened it. If God closes a door, nobody can open it. And if you open a door, nobody can knock it. Maybe because of the screaming, even Noah would have had pity and opened the door under emergency. But it wasn't even Noah that closed it. It was God instead that shut it. They will come, the door will be shut. The door of mercy will be shut. They is going to come when you did, if you did not give your life to Christ, if not serve God, if not persist, if you are falling and you never rose up again, if you are backslidden and you desire not to come back again, they will come when the door will be closed and mercy door will be closed. Then you'll be wailing and crying. Had I known, it will be too late. Jesus said, it is like the days on one. When people were preached to, and they never repented, and they perished in the floor. So people of this generation, despite the preaching, they will also perish in the generation. Because they will not hear God's word. There are preachers who preach this gospel, and yet they don't believe in Jesus they preach about. You, you don't know that? They preach it to end their living. But Jesus they talk about, they don't believe it. They are not even born again. They don't even talk about salvation. There are people who pray every day. Go to the mountain and spend night to pray. Yet they don't give their life to Christ or they've not been born again. There are people who are different religion. Who think they are going to heaven. Different religion. They sacrifice themselves. Did all kinds of sacrifice. They think they will go to heaven. But they will not go there. Why? Because they do not believe in Jesus Christ. As the son of God. And they do not believe Jesus Christ is God. And not take him as is their Lord and personal savior. That is the point. If you don't follow the things of God tenaciously, seriously, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your spirit, you miss a mark. And we are sorry to tell you this, and it's bitter to say, you may not have opportunity to follow in the rapture. Now, we talk about rapture. What is rapture? And when will the rapture take place? The rapture can take place at any time. It could be this day as we are preaching. If you have committed sin yesterday, or this morning, or last year, and you've not repented, or five years ago, and you've not repented of that sin, if the rapture, rapture takes place now, you will miss heaven. The Bible says, two women will be in the meal grinding pepper. One will be taken and the other one left. Two will be, two husband and wife could be sleeping on the bed. One will be taken and the other one left. One slept with anger and bitterness and never forgive the husband. The one who slept with anger and bitterness remained in the bed. The other one who forgave went to heaven. The one who committed adultery yesterday, the one who committed adult fornication last night and did not repent will be left behind. And the one who repented, say, God, I'm sorry, will be taken away. The one who is fighting and taking corruptions and refused to repent will go down. The one who repented and said, Lord, I receive you as my Lord, I'm sorry, will all be taken away. It's all a matter how prepared are you for the rapture. Knowing for sure the rapture can take place now and can take place this night. It can take place tomorrow. The question is that how prepared are you for the rapture? First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. Please turn with me. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant. Friends, mamas and papas, sons and daughters, co-pastors, co-leaders, but I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you say not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them 
also we sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall arise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This simple word. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Do not let anybody cajole you that the coming of the Lord will not come. He said it will come. If you think he's not going to come, he's going to come. He's going to say, hear this. He said, go with, Jesus Christ will come with a shout in the heavens, with a trump of God. And those who died, your husband that died many years ago, your child that died many years ago, your mother that died in the Lord, they will hear the trump of God. Wherever they were buried, those who were buried through, I mean, in the bush, in the sea, buried normally on the ground, those who bones scattered, immediately a trumpet lounge. The Spirit of God will go to there where all Christians have been buried around the whole world. Whether they were buried or they were not buried. Wherever their body is, has, has turned to soil. soil. The, body will, the Spirit of God will go there, quicken their body on the floor. The Bible says, they will not raise up. Now raise up in immortality. Not with this flesh and blood any longer. But they will carry the same body, the same face. The same body will know you. We know who you are. Then you rise up. The Bible says they will not go up to meet the Lord in the air. Then we that are alive, that have not dead, the Lord will come over, pick us, quicken our body, and all of a sudden we will just fly up to heaven to meet with the Lord in the air. And that is called rapture. After he has gathered us and we meet him in the air, then we will now proceed from there to the marriage what? Supper. Marriage feast. Marriage feast. We will now proceed to the marriage feast. Now, the point is that what about those who were not raptured? Oh, pity. Those who never wake up from the dead. Those who are not raptured. Those who were buried with casket of one million naira. Those who were who import they imported their casket from America. Those who were who were who did ceremonial ceremonial burial ceremony, their body will still be on the what? On the ground. No matter how the priests come and conduct their burial ceremony, say, Oh ladies and gentlemen. Our brother Jeremiah who just died. How good he was. He bought this organ in the church. He gave, built us a sanctuary. Staying God. He is our brother. May his soul rest in peace. No matter how the priest could conduct the burial. And God know he is a member of Oboni society. He is known in the church as a good brother. He's known in the church as a righteous brother. He gave everything, built house for the pastor, bought car for the pastor, and pastor look at him as a good brother. But God knows that he's a member of Amok society. God knows he's a member of secret society. God knows that his wealth did not come from the just means. His wealth came from mysterious sacrifice of human blood. God knows he was a dupe and a shit. God knows he was a man given to sin and atrocities. And while they are thinking his soul is going to God, God is waiting for the second resurrection where he will be resurrected to the, what we call the white throne judgment and he will be judged and cast into hell. Now the question is this. 
Where are you going to spend your eternity? Where are you going to spend your eternity? With God or with Satan the devil? The Bible says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will raise up. And we wish our life will be caught together to meet him. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 7. But the heavens and the earth which include the gold you have. Women, hear this. The gold you are hiding somewhere. The money you are hiding somewhere. All the wealth you have made on this world. All the plus, the, the good things you have, you have decorated yourself. You may have polished your skin. You may be looking so fine. And listen to me, no matter how fine you are, no matter how worthy you are, one day we will stand before God. Say, but, verse 7, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of our godly men. But, beloved, but people of Covenant Life Church, but those of us hearing these teachings across the world, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And the Lord, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as a man counts slackness, but long-suffering to us what? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat of fire. The earth also, and the works that you have done in this world, the building, the mansion, the wealth accusation, everything you have done, that are daring shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, your gold, your makeup kit, your clothes, your accusation, all the things you have acquired, your body shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hating on, hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heaven be on fire, shall be dissolved, and the element shall melt with what? Fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to the promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwell righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be delight, diligent that ye be not found of him in peace, that you may be found in him in peace, without spot and blameless. The question is that, will you be in a new heaven? Will you be in a new heaven? Where will you spend your eternity? Your flesh may be so arousing. What, what is pushing you? There are people today, their flesh cannot control them. When they see a woman, their body will be catching fire. Why don't you control that flesh? You couldn't stop it. Something always blinked you. Your, your body will be hitting very hard. Until you do the immorality, your body is not rest. What's so wrong with you? Some men, some women, the same thing. Oh, it may not be even their husband. When they see some kind of men, their body will never rest. That thing that is pushing you, if you can't control it, one day, fire will put you into a situation where you'll be saying, I wish it would go, but it's too late. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. 
control your passion. Let not the thing of the world control you. Live in the fear of God. And we see in the scriptures that everything we, we have today will be dissolved. What kind of way should you start preparing yourself? We may build mansion, good and fine. I like building. In all your building, make sure it is God. There are people today, they have thousands of more reasons. If you want to do house fellowship in their house, they say no. They don't even want brass to visit them. Because they failed, have one reason or the other. What do you have? What do you have? One day, they will be dissolved. Even if you die today, don't forget, right there, you will not remember you have a mansion. You will not remember you have gold. You don't remember you have uh, Hollandis. All your makeup kits. All your pancake. And all the hairdo. All the shoes and the suit you have. Designer suits. You will never remember anything again. Everything you have here is going to be left behind here. You came to this world naked. And one day you are going to God naked. Just as you are. Looking at this thing. That one day Jesus will come. The rapture will take place. How far have you prepared for the rapture? How far are you preparing your children for the rapture? There are people today who don't even bother. Their children won't come to church. They don't even put any pressure. They don't put their pressure on it. They don't want to... I mean, the habit you did not cultivate in your children at young. Don't think they will get it when they are old. They can't even make their children come to church. Say, no, they are there. When they grow up, they will do it. It's not like that. God will ask you, I give you those children to care for. You throw them in the street. You never be bothered about them coming to church. You don't be bothered about you come start serving God. You are here today. The question is, where is your wife? Is your wife here in church with you? Where are your children? Are your children in church with you? Where are those siblings that are living with you? Have they come to knowledge of God? You say, oh no, we have been hearing the Lord is going to come for a long time. Listen to me. If he did not come, you will go to him. He said that he comes, or you would go to him. Whatever happened, it has come, he has come. If you die, you will go to him to face your judgment. If he comes to you, he will come here and judge you. You better be prepared, because you don't know who, when you will die. Today now, we discover people who just sleep and never woke up. They never plan to die. There are people who have millions of money in their bank account. They feel that they have a lot of enjoyment to go. But all of a sudden, with all the millions, they slept and never woke up. Who is going to eat those money? The money refused to give to God. Somebody is going to mess it up. You give your tithe. No, how can I give my tithe? Give for the cause of the gospel. No, how can I give for the cause of God? It's difficult for me to give. Don't worry. Don't worry. Keep the money to yourself. Don't pay your tithe. Don't give to God. Nobody will force you to do that. But one day, the one who owns your life, the one who owns your money, will ask you to give account of what you do with your life, what you do with your money. And when that day comes, when they are separating the sheep from the goat, you will know which side you are, whether you are a goat or you are a sheep. Jesus talked about the story of foolish version and wise version. The one who think they are wise, they became fool. There are two people today who feel they are wise. Do this in the house of God is not really important. Come to Bible study is not really important after I've had the word of God already. Come to Thursday Holy Communion. Say, well, what am I going to do? Say, well, who is going to preach after all? Come to this one. Do this. Do that. Walk in the house of God. Be serious with God. No, I better be serious with my business, with my work. Listen to me. 
wise, truly wise men, they actually seek for Jesus. And if you don't seek for Jesus with all your mind and with all your heart, God will say on the last day, I never know you. And I don't want on the last day God look at you. See, your name is Agnes. And you have been prophesying. You have been doing this. You have been doing great things. And God look and say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Maybe because of the lie, because of the shitting, because of the things you are supposed to do for God, you refuse to do it. Because of money, because of fame, because of popularity. You couldn't do it. Or because of what people will say. That's why I don't want to do it. I have a mind to do something for God. But I am scared what people will do or what people will say. If that thing is the thing, then you made a big mistake. God has the treasure you have, which you are boasting of. It is only God that can keep it. There are people today, they only have one child. Only one child. And they use every resources in their life to try to protect that one child they have. Because they know they cannot have any other one. They don't have a boy. They don't have a girl. Other, other than the one child they have. Maybe one girl or one boy. But do you know what happened? If you like, do everything at your disposal. If God take that child, you cannot arrest God. You cannot query God. You cannot even go and meet the pastor. Pastor prayed. And God did not answer the prayer. You can't arrest the pastor. Because it wasn't a contract. It wasn't a contract. But listen to me. What you did do for God. Your service you do for God. Decide to paint church. Decide to do this thing in the house of God. Decide to take care of singers, preachers. Release your money. Pay tight. Give. Support. Do thanksgiving. And do things in the house of God. That thing you, are, you do, don't know, you don't know, it's recorded in heaven. Your giving, your good words you do on earth is recorded in heaven. Colonials did some good work and God came down and said, because of the good things Colonials is doing, I can't lie to go to hell. I've come to save him. God intervened. If you like, say, God, I'm going to serve God in my heart. Come to church quietly and go home quietly. Quietly, it's not good enough for you. Go home to church quietly. Go quietly. Don't know, be no. It's not good enough. God wants you to shine in the midst of darkness. You don't. Light are not meant to be put in quiet place. Light are not meant to put in dark places. You are a light. You ought to shine. In church, you ought to shine. In the streets, you need to shine. Shine as a light. The question is this. Wherever you were living, did they know you as a sister or as a prostitute? Did they know you as a drug addict or as a Christian bra? Did they know you as someone who is a fighter or as a church person? Did they know if there are 20 people in your street, somebody stole something or your company, that somebody stole something, if they say, if they measure the name of John, they say, if it's John, count that man out. Or they will say, if that is lost, you must add John. John has must be in it. Now, you see your life? When you more walk on the street, what do people talk about you? Your dressing, your look, your activity. We know, we prove whether you will make heaven or you will not make heaven. The question I want to ask you again, where will you spend your eternity? Another thing is that, are you prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ? Because he will come. If you think he's not going to come, he's going to come. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from this, from where's face, the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small, and great standing before God and the books were open another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works John saw this vision 
say a great white throne judgment was thrown. And the one who came to judge the world, who, Jesus. And when he came, the earth and the heaven fled away. Jesus is the judge of the world. He's coming back to judge the whole world. And when he stood on that throne to judge, and the Bible says, and I saw the dead, the small boy that you dedicated to an idol, the Bible says, the dead was standing, both small and great. The child you refused to dedicate in the house of God, you gave birth to a child. You don't dedicate it in the house of God. You dedicate it to Ogogoro and to your grandfather. And say, see, call your elders, your uncle, your nephew. And they were drinking and pouring Ogogoro and using Ogogoro to rub in mouth. Say, hey, praise our father for bringing this our child. You never brought to the house of God. You celebrated before pan wine drunkards. You celebrated before the drunkards. Before the idolatry of the land. One day, both small and great, we stand before the great white throne judgment. The one that is getting married, and as he's planning for marriage, he's already pregnant and aborting themselves, and they still did not repent. They were living in morality. In the name of they will get married. And they hid it from the marriage committee. And no, they never repented out of it. And I saw the great, both small, stand before God on the great white throne judgment. The one that has all the money, and he uses the money to oppress the staff in the office. He uses the money to spread blackmail people. He, instead of helping people, he wants to tarnish the people. And he uses the money to oppress so that nobody will come near him. Nobody will be like him. And he wants to be the champion of the day. The one that has money, and he uses money in a wrong way. Not in the church way. Not in God's way. The one that has money, and but refuses to pay his tithe. The one that has money and refused to do the things of God, spending the things of God. And I saw the great and the small, the billionaires, the dollars, the Americans, the Canadians, the Indians, the Japanese, the Africans, the Nigerians, the people in the village, the poor and educated men, the ones who were suffering in the streets. Or Kaduna, and the one that are living in mansion, I saw the great, both small and great, standing before the throne of the Almighty God for a judgment. And a book was opened. The book that was opened is a book of life. Only one book containing all the names of the children of God. But he said, I saw other books. Books in Prora containing so many names of people. And everybody was judged. They opened the book and they said, Mr. John, come over. And they saw Mr. John. They said, What about that alcohol in your pocket? What about that thing we told you to stop? You refused to stop. You died while committing fornication on a woman's leg. You died while doing this one. You died while doing this one. You were killing. Abortion. You were doing the abortion and you died. And they look at your pocket. And they say, those things they told you to stop, you refuse to stop it. And they brought it. And the Bible says, and I saw the dead, both great and small, stand before, and a book were opened according to their works. And I, the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell deliver of the dead which were in them. That were, and they were judged every man according to their works. Verse 14. And the dead and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That is where they will spend their eternity. Let me explain what is mean by eternity. A man will be in hell fire for day one. If you pack all the sin, the, 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 the sand 
of Kaduna River. Or you pack all the sand that is in the, uh, in the coast, in the river. Pack all the sand. And start counting the sand one by one. You have not started eternity. Eternity is forever. And when your fire is burning you, it's not burning you with the hope it's going to quench tomorrow. Even the worm in your body won't, won't be eating you up. And yet, the fire is burning you. You'll be screaming. Today, when it's hot, you say, give me one shot of a beer or hot to cool me down. When it is warm, the same thing that is cooling down is what you use to do what? Warm yourself. Don't worry. You get a lot of hot over there in hell fire. When the fire is burning, it's going to be hot. And you can take a lot of that hot and not just one day, not just for two weeks, not just for one month, not just for 100 years, not on to 1,000 years, is for thousands and thousands of thousands of thousands, billions and billions and billions of years, uncountable, you be in hell. Now, count the costs. Will it not pain if we spend? Will we not be better if we spend our life with Christ in heaven forever than spending one day in hell? Please, I beg you, every one of us, who have messed up our life. Every one of us who have not prepared for his coming. Every one of us who did not know this should come back and pick ourselves and look at where we are falling. The Bible says, examine yourself. Examine yourself where you are falling and come up quickly. God is merciful. It's not that we preach this thing to make you feel that you are lost forever. No. There is hope. Only if you are willing to say, I am sorry. God, forgive me my sins. I quit whatever has been holding me. If you are willing to say, ready to say, Jesus, come into my life. If you are ready to say, I give you everything in me. And for Jesus and Jesus, there is hope. But if not, the great white throne judgment will be waiting. When God will judge every human being on earth who will not partake in the first resurrection, which is the rapture. Turn with me to Revelation 21. Revelation 21 verse 8. It says, But the fearful, those who are afraid to come to church, those who, who want rice and chicken instead of God, God's word, those who want, want to because of Christmas, because of celebration, because of burial ceremony, because of ce ce celebrity. I won't go to church today. I want to enjoy myself. Say, so don't worry. Don't worry. God will never stop you. If you want to enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself. But one day, you will give account of that enjoy enjoyment. If that enjoyment cannot make you to be in church to hear God's word, like Mary, Mary was sitting in with Jesus. Martha was busy cooking and Martha could not come to church to hear God's word because of frying stew and cooking rice and plantain and dodo and chicken and turkey and he was even preparing for who? For the master. And Jesus said, Mary, you are worried. You are careful. You are bothered with many things. Those things you are bothered with cooking and stewing that stop you from coming to the house of God. He said it will be taken away from you. He said, but Mary has chosen the best. Leaving the cooking, leaving the food, leaving ceremony, leaving burial ceremony, leaving the wedding ceremony, and leaving all the ceremonies and ceremonies. And he came to the house of God. Say, I can be in the house of God at any time. And he was listening. And Jesus said, Mary has chosen the best thing that cannot be taken away from him. Ah, and that is forever. But Jesus said it's for, can never be taken away. Now hear me. If cooking, if stew and rice made you not to be in New Year's services, if stew and rice make you not to be in church services, if stew and rice make you not to be in Christmas services, Jesus said, stew, rice, turkey, 
chicken. Rest. Let me rest my head and sleep. Those who want Jesus said they are all temporary. But being in the house of God to listen to the word shall never be taken away from you. And ladies and gentlemen, he said, but, look at it. Look at it in the Bible. But the fearful. Those who are afraid to be in church. Those who are afraid they will kill us. They will bomb church. And some will not come to church. Hey, they are killing everybody in church. Those who are afraid to be in church. Those who are afraid to send their children. Say, but the fearful. And the unbelieving. Those who do not believe that Jesus is going to come. Those who do not believe in the teaching of, his, of the word of God. I don't believe all this thing pastor is saying. He said, no worry, no problem. But you are unbelieving. And they are abominable. And they murderers. Those who murder by knife. Murder by their mouth. Gossiping and backbiting. Because the Bible says, if you hate your brother, you are a murderer already. Those who murder by their tongue. Murder by hatred. Murder by knife. By abortion. By honor. And they warm mongers. And the sorcerers, the Oboni, the Hare Krishna, the, all those who involve them in secret courts, the Amok, and all those who involve themselves in secret societies, the sorcerers, and the idolaters, those who have their juju, they tie it on their waist. Say, hey, you must help yourself. Oh. You must help yourself. My father and my mother gave me this thing from the village. I must tie it on my waist, on my leg. I must put it under my house, in my shop. All the idolaters. And what? And all liars. Those who lie to their father. All liars. Those who tell their father. Daddy. They say we should buy a book. One of the books is Bio. One of that one is Leo. One is your Three books. And you mean one book. Biology. And you carry the three money. And put the two extra money in your pocket. And you buy one book. All liars. Those who lie to their husband. To give them money for something and they are sending the money because they want to send the money to the village those who lie to their husband to give them money because if i don't tell it to my husband that way he will not give me the money so i have the way to trick it up those who lie to their wife that they are going to sokoto whereas they are lodging a girl in the hotel at aguandoza those who lie to their children Hey, stay in the house. Don't worry. As I'm coming, I will buy a replay for you. And when you come back, you say, Mama, where's the replay you promised? He say, Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Those who lie to their children. And all liars. Those who lie in the house of God. I make a vow. I will give this to God. And they know they are lying. Those who lie, I'll pay tithes. And they know they are lying. And all liars. White lies. Black lies. Lie you lie to your boss. Lie you lie to your friend. Lie you lie to your pastor. A lie kills somebody in the house of God. Ananias and who? Sapphira. They lie and they die. And the, the, the wife came. The wife was busy making up. And because of makeup, because of a gale, because of putting powder and pancake, she came late and was coming. My wife, my husband is the one who is sponsoring the church. My husband is the one who gave big money, sold the land and gave. And he came to the church. And as he reached the church, and said, man of God said, is it true that, is it true, is it true that you sold the land and gave the whole money? Man of God, peace be unto you. We gave, that is true, we gave everything to God, to our God. I love Jesus sweet Jesus. And Paul said, and the man of God said, why did you lie against the Holy Ghost? Your husband has just died because of lying. And now you're going to die. The man and their wife died because lying because of his own money. Had their own money. The Bible said, all oh, liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with what? Fire. And burned with what? Brimstone, which is sulfur, which is the second death. The question I want to say, Jesus is coming, but where will you spend your eternity? Stand up.
Let us pray. I speak for the weak. I'm an advocate for the young. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a child of covenant. It's my time to laugh. Cause I have conquered it all. Impossible is nothing. Impossible is nothing. I am a champion. I am